Next, we consider an example of using Danzig Wolf decomposition for solving a problem with block diagonal structure. So we have this maximization LP, there are four variables, and then we have six constraints as well as non negativity of all the variables. We can see that the first two constraints involve most of the variables. The first constraint involves all four variables, the second three out of four, but then the next two pairs of constraints have the block diagonal structure. We can see that there are two constraints that involve only the variables x1 and x2, and then there are two more constraints that involve the variables x3 and x4. So we'll represent a set of x1 and x2 variables that satisfy these first two constraints in the block diagonal part as the set x1. And this set is illustrated here. So there are only two variables, x1 and x2. And we can see that there are four extreme points. And then we'll denote the set of feasible x3 and x4 with respect to the last two constraints by x2 capital. And again, we illustrate this set on the plane. Here we have the coordinates x3 and x4, and x2 capital represents the set of all x3s and x4s that satisfy the last two constraints. Just like the set x1 capital, x2 capital also has four extreme points. With this new notation, we can represent our problem as follows. Maximize C1 transpose times X1, X2. So here by C1, we denote the vector of coefficients for the first two variables, which is given by 2, 1. So let me write it down here. So C1 is 2, 1. And then plus C2 transposed times X3, X4. And C2 transposed will be the vector of coefficients for the variables X3 and X4. So C2 is given by 3 and 1. And then for the complicating constraints, we are going to denote the matrix corresponding to the first two variables by A1. So this is A1 times x1, x2, plus a2 times x3, x4, where a2 would be the matrix corresponding to the variables x3 and x4. And this is less than or equal to the vector b, where b is given by 6 and 4. And then the rest of the constraints would be x1, x2 belongs to the set x1, and then x3, x4 belongs to x2. So this is our new formulation of the same problem, where we take advantage of these notations x1 capital and x2 capital for the corresponding blocks in this part of the constraints. Next, we proceed to develop the Danzig-Wolf reformulation of our problem. And for that, we are going to represent a point belonging to the set X1 capital as a convex combination of the extreme points of the set X1. And similarly for X2, we will represent a point belonging to this set as a convex combination of uh, these four extreme points here. So we'll have x1, x2 represented as the summation of lambda 1 j's, x1 j's for j between 1 and 4. So here by x1 j for j between 1 and 4, we denote the four extreme points of the set x1. And similarly for the variables x3, x4, we have the representation as a convex combination of the points x 2 j's. So we have the summation of lambda 2 j's, x 2 j's, and here x 2 j denotes the jth extreme point of the set x 2, where j goes between 1 and 4. 
So now we are going to plug in these expressions in our formulation right here in order to obtain the danzig wolf reformulation and we obtain the following. Maximize the summation of C1 transposed X1Js times lambda 1J for J between 1 and 4 then plus the summation again for j between 1 and 4 of c2 transposed x2j multiplied by lambda 2j's so this is our objective and then for the complicating constraints we have the summation of a1 times x1j multiplied by lambda 1j for j between 1 and 4 and similarly for the variables x3 and x4 we will have the summation for j between 1 and 4 of a2 multiplied by x2j times lambda 2j and this is less than or equal to b and finally to represent the fact that x1 x2 belongs to the set x1 capital and uh, x3 x4 belongs to the set x2 capital we just need to specify the convexity constraints so the first convexity constraint will be the summation of lambda 1 j's for j between 1 and 4 is equal to 1 and then the second convexity constraint will be the summation of lambda 2j's is equal to 1 for j between 1 and 4. And we have lambda 1j, lambda 2j are non negative for j between 1 and 4. So here we forgot to specify the matrices A1 and A2. So A1 is the sub-matrix of the matrix of the left-hand side of the complicating constraints corresponding to the variables x1 and x2. So it's given by 1, 1, 0, 1. And then A2 is the sub-matrix corresponding to the variables x3 and x4. And A2 is... 1, 1, 2, 1. And next we will write down the sub-problems that we will need to solve at each step of Danzig-Wolf decomposition. Recall that in the Danzig-Wolf decomposition method we start by formulating and solving a restricted master problem which only contains a subset of the columns of uh, our master problem right here. So assume that we have the optimal solution of our restricted master problem and let's denote the optimal values of the dual variables by vector y for the complicating constraints part and then by alpha 1 for the first convexity constraint and by alpha 2 for the second convexity constraint. And now we are ready to formulate the column generating subproblems that will help us to decide whether the optimal solution to the restricted master problem is optimal to the whole master problem or we need to generate a new column that will improve upon the current solution. So we will have two column generating subproblems. So subproblem one will be for the first block and sub problem 2 will be for the second block. So let's now formulate the two sub problems and again we are separating the parts corresponding to the sets x1 and x2. So for the first sub problem we have maximize over the set x1 capital and for the reduced cost we have c1 transposed x minus y transposed times a1 x and then minus alpha 1 
And for the second sub problem, we maximize over the set x2 c2 transposed x minus y transposed a2x minus alpha 2. So we have these formulations for the sub problems and we proceed by solving both the sub problems and finding the optimal objective values z1 hat and z2 hat and checking whether z1 hat or z2 hat is greater than zero. If both z1 hat and z2 hat do not exceed zero, then we conclude that the current optimal solution to the restricted master problem is indeed the optimal solution to the master problem and we terminate. Otherwise, if at least one of these two values is greater than zero, we will proceed to generating the column corresponding to the extreme point producing this uh, z1 hat or z2 hat which is positive. Before we proceed to the initialization of Danzig-Wolf decomposition, let's first specify these sub-problems more explicitly by plugging in the values of c1, a1 as well as c2 and a2. So for the first sub-problem, the coefficient for x1 is going to be given by 2, then the product of the vector y by the first column of a1 will give us y1. So we have the coefficient for x1 is 2 minus y1. And then the coefficient for x2 will be given by... 1 and then minus vector y multiplied by the second column of matrix A1 which is y1 plus y2 and this is the coefficient for x2 right and then we have minus alpha 1 so for the first sub problem we'll need to maximize this objective function with respect to x1 x2 belonging to the set x1 capital and then for the second sub-problem, we can similarly compute the coefficients for x3 and x4. So the coefficient for x3 will be 3 minus y multiplied by the first column of the matrix A2, which is 3 minus y1 minus 2y2. And then the coefficient for x4 will be given by 1 minus y multiplied by the second column of matrix A2, which is 1 minus y1 minus y2, and then we subtract alpha 2. So this is the objective we'll have to optimize over the set x2 for the second sub-problem. To initialize, we'll need a feasible extreme point and uh, because all the right-hand sides are positive, in our case, we can use the origin as the starting point. So let's denote this extreme point for x1 set by x11, and uh, the origin will be the extreme point x21 for the set x2. Then we will set lambda11 and lambda21 to 1. This will be the two of the starting columns that we will use for our restricted master problem. And then the other two columns will correspond to the slack variables that we introduced for the complicating constraints. So you'll introduce the slack variable S1 for the first complicating constraint and S2 for the second constraint. So now we have four starting columns and we have four constraints. And this is sufficient for initialization. So we'll have S1 will be equal to 6, S2 will be equal to 4, and then lambda 1, 1 and lambda 2, 1 will be both equal to 1 in our initial basic solution to the restricted master problem. So here is what we have for initialization. 
So as usual, we will write down the values of the optimal dual variables in row zero. So it will be y1, y2, alpha1, alpha2. Then we'll have z in row zero. And then here we will have B inverse, the basic matrix inverse. Then here we'll have B inverse times B, the current optimal solution to the restricted master problem. And finally, we'll have the list of basic variables. This is the representation that we'll have for every iteration. In the beginning, we have zeros in row zero. Then we have the identity matrix for B inverse. Then the right hand side for the first constraint was 6, for the second it was 4. These were the values of the slack variables at our initial point. And then the values of lambda variables were equal to 1 in our initial solution and the corresponding basic variables were S1, S2, then lambda 1, 1 and lambda 2, 1. So and uh, here we had uh, the values of y1, y2, alpha1, alpha2, this is z and this is the list of basic variables. So now we are ready to start the first iteration for which we need to solve these two sub problems. So at the first iteration we have the first sub problem is obtained by plugging in y1, y2 and alpha1 equal to 0 in here and we obtain the maximum of 2 times x1 plus x2 over the set x1. So our objective is to maximize 2x1 plus x2 over this feasible set right here and clearly the optimal solution is going to be given by 6, 0. So recall that we denoted this extreme point by x11. Then let's denote this extreme point by x12. So our optimal solution is x12 which is 6, 0 and uh, z one hat is 12. And for the second sub problem we have z2 hat given by the maximum of again plug in y1, y2 and alpha2 equal to 0 and we obtain 3x3 plus x4. This is our objective that we need to optimize over the set x2. And clearly the optimal solution will be given by this point right here, 5, 0. So this was our x21. Let's call this point x22. So our optimal solution is x22 given by 5, 0. And z2 hat is 15. Recall that we can use the values of z hats and the z bar, which is the optimal objective value for our restricted master problem, in order to obtain a bound on the optimal objective value for our master problem. So in case of minimization problem, we would obtain the lower bound given by z bar minus z1 hat minus z2 hat. But here we have a maximization problem and in this case we can get an upper bound given by z bar plus z1 hat plus z2 hat which is 0 from here plus 12 from here and then plus 15 from here. So 27 is the upper bound on the optimal objective value that we get from this iteration. Okay, to complete the step, we need to generate a new column. We see that both z1 hat and z2 hat are greater than zero. 
and we'll pick the maximum of Z1 hat and Z2 hat in order to generate our next column. So the higher value corresponds to Z2 hat and uh, we will generate the column corresponding to our extreme point X22. So in this column that we generate, when we put it into the basis corresponding to our optimal solution to the restricted master problem, then in row zero, we are going to obtain the negative of Z2 hat, which is negative 15. And then in the constraints, we will have B inverse multiplied by the column corresponding to the constraints, which will be given by a2 x22 and then we have zero because this is uh, the second sub problem and we have zero coefficient for the first convexity constraint in the corresponding column and then we have the coefficient of one corresponding to the second convexity constraint and uh, recall that our b inverse is the identity matrix so it's just going to be a2 times x22 and then 0, 1, and uh, this will be our column. So let's compute A2 multiplied by X22. So X22 is given by 5, 0. A2 is this matrix right here. So our column will be 5, 10. That's for the part corresponding to A2, X22, and then 0, 1. This is what we have in the constraints, and then we have negative 15 in the objective. So this is the column that is going to enter the basis. So, and let me copy the current tableau that we have. Lambda 2, 2, and we start by performing the ratio test. The ratios will be 6 fifth, 4 tenth, and 1 respectively. We skip row 3 because we have 0 here. So the winner of the ratio test is going to be row 2 with the ratio given by 4 tenths or 2 fifths. We start the pivot by first updating row 2 by dividing every element in this row by 10. We obtain the new row 2 given by 0, 1 tenth, 0, 0, 2 fifths. And the new basic variable in this row is going to be lambda 2, 2. To update row 0, we are going to multiply the new row 2 by 15 and add it to the old row 0. We will obtain 0, 15 tenths, which is also 3 halves, 0, 0, and then 15 times 2 fifths is 6. So this is our new objective value. Then we update row 1. To update row 1, we multiply the new row 2 by negative 5 and add the result to the old row 1. We will obtain 1, negative 1 half, 0, 0, 4, and the basic variable in this row is still S1. Since we already have 0 here in row 3, we just copy the row 3 the same as before. And to obtain the new row 4, we need to subtract the new row 2 from the old row 4. We will obtain 0, negative 1 tenth, 0, 1 and 3 fifth. So and the basic variable here is lambda 2, 1. Finally, let's specify the dual variables here, y1, y2, alpha 1, alpha 2. We see that now one of the dual variables is positive and the rest are zeros. So this is our value of z, which is 6. This is our z bar, in fact. And this completes the first iteration. And now we are ready to proceed to the second iteration. So we copy all the data we need for iteration 2. And we formulate the first sub-problem. Z1 hat is equal to the maximum. And now we have Y2 is equal to 3 halves, but Y1 is still 0. 
here we have 2 times x1 and then 1 minus 3 halves times x2 so which is minus 1 half x2 and alpha 1 is still 0 and we maximize this over x in the set x1. So we are maximizing 2x1 minus 1 half x2. Looking at this feasible set here, we see that the point x12 is still the optimal solution. So we have 6, 0 with the objective of 12. And then for the second sub problem, z2 hat is equal to the maximum of 3 minus 2 times 3 halves is 0 and uh, the coefficient for x4 is going to be 1 minus 3 halves so negative 1 half our objective is negative 1 half x4 and we need to maximize this over x in uh, x2 and clearly the optimal point for this sub problem from the previous iteration is still optimal for this iteration because x4 is equal to 0. So we get this value with the point x22 given by 5, 0. All right, now we can update the upper bound that we obtained from z bar and uh, z hats. So our new upper bound on the optimal objective is given by the summation of 6 plus 12 and plus 0. We obtain 18. And we can see that the upper bound improves from 27 at the previous iteration to 18 at uh, the second iteration. So now we know for sure that z star, the optimal objective value for our problem, is no more than 18. To complete this iteration, we need to generate the column corresponding to the extreme point x12 in our restricted master problem. If you were to generate this column in the original problem data, then in the constraints we would have a1 multiplied by x12 gives us 6 for the first entry and then 0 for the second entry. So we have 6, 0 for the first two entries. Then since this extreme point comes from the first sub-problem, we will have the coefficient of 1 for the corresponding lambda 1, 2 in the first convexity constraint and we'll have the coefficient of zero in the second convexity constraint. So this is our vector a1 times x12 and then 1, 0. And now we multiply this by b inverse from the left in order to obtain our coefficients for this column in the basis corresponding to the optimal basis to our restricted master problem. So multiplying b inverse given here by this vector, we obtain 6 for the first entry, then 0 for the second entry, 1 for the third entry, and 0 for the last entry. And in the objective, of course, we have the negative of z1 hat, which is negative 12. So this is the column that we are going to generate. And this corresponds to lambda 1, 2 as the entering variable. And now we are ready to perform the iteration of the simplex method to obtain the new optimal solution to the restricted master problem. So row 1 is going to win the ratio test with the ratio of 4 6 or 2 thirds and we proceed by updating row 1 first by dividing all the entries in this row by 6. We obtain 1 6 minus 1 12 0 0 Two thirds, and the basic variable in this row now is going to be lambda one two. Next, we update row zero by multiplying the new row one by twelve and adding it to the old row zero. So we'll have two one half zero zero 
14 and this is our new row 0. So we have y1 is given by 2, y2 is 1 half, alpha 1 is 0, alpha 2 is 0, our z is 14. So now we have 0 here, so row 2 will remain unchanged. We have 0, 1 tenth, 0, 0, 2 fifth, and lambda 2, 2 is the basic variable in this row. To obtain the new row 3, we need to multiply the new row 1 by negative 1 and add the result to the old row 3. So we'll obtain negative 1, 6, 1, 12, 1, 0, and 1 third. And the basic variable in this row is still lambda 1, 1. And finally, since we have 0 in this position, the old row 4 just needs to be copied to obtain the new row 4. So we have 0, negative 1 tenth, 0, 1, 3 fifth, and lambda 2, 1 as the basic variable. This completes the second iteration and we are ready to proceed to the third iteration. So for the third iteration we have z1 hat given by the maximum and now y1 is 2, y2 is 1 half and alphas are zeros. So the coefficient for x1 in the first subproblem is 0. The coefficient for x2 in this subproblem is 1 minus 2 minus 1 half. So we have negative 3 halves times x2 and we maximize this over x1 and clearly the optimal objective value is 0 and it is achieved at the point x12 as before so we have 0 here and for the second sub problem we have z2 hat given by the maximum of let's see what are the coefficients for x3 and x4 here we have 3 minus 2 minus 1, 0 coefficient for x3 and the coefficient for x4 is 1 minus 2 minus 1 half gives us negative 3 halves x4 and it is also 0. So both subproblems give the optimal objective value of 0 and if you were to compute the upper bound we would conclude that our z star is less than or equal to z bar which is 14 plus 0 and plus 0 from z2 hat. So the upper bound is given by 14 and then the lower bound of course is given by the optimal objective value for our restricted master problem. So upper bound and lower bound match. So we conclude that this solution is optimal to our master problem. And we can write down the optimal solution to the original LP now by looking at the convex combination of the extreme points that were included in this optimal solution to the master problem. So for the optimal values of x1 and x2, we obtain the following convex combination. So we'll have two thirds multiplied by x12 and x12 is 6, 0. Then plus the other lambda with the first index equal to 1 is lambda 1, 1. So we have plus one third x11 1, 1 and x11 1, 1 is 0. So we obtain 4 and 0 for x1 and x2. And for x3 star and x4 star, we obtain 2 fifth x22. And x22 was 5 0 plus 3 fifth x21. And x21 was 0, 0. So x3 star will be 2. And x4 star is 0. So in summary, the solution x star that we obtain 
is 4, 0, 2, 0 and z star is 14. So this is our optimal objective value. So this is our final answer to this problem.